All right, I'm Chris Giruso. I am the writer and artist of G-Man, graphic novel series, all ages. And uh, I don't know what else do you need. Oh yeah, ChrisGComics.com for anything that I've worked on. Uh, anything G-Man related, Mini Marvels related. Excuse me? G-Man is a little kid superhero. It's uh, The comic is kind of a hybrid between a classic newspaper humor strip and an old school superhero comic where the emphasis is more on superhero fun than uh, uh, that, that's, that's uh, suitable for all ages. I actually, I actually do know your comic pretty well. I have uh, the first character now I'm going to have this week now, I keep pricing since I did it. And one of the characters in my comic strip actually is your comic is Oh, well, I'm flattered. Thanks. <laughs> thank, thank you very much. You do a lot of really great work. Oh, thank you. Can you just tell everybody who you are? Uh, hi, I'm Joe Kelly. And what do you do? Um, part of Man of Action Studios, uh, we created Ben 10, Generator Rex, currently we're producers on Ultimate Spider-Man on Disney XD, uh, also a comic book writer, I wrote I Kill Giants, Bad Dog, Four Eyes, and a whole bunch of stuff including Space Ghost, Justice League, Deadpool, X-Men, Superman, a whole bunch of stuff. Now where did you guys come up with the idea for Ben 10? Uh, ben 10 started uh, when we all worked together on the X-Men. Uh, we were talking about different powers, you know, you're trying to come up with a new mutant power. So, uh, Duncan Rulo had an idea about a guy who trades places with himself from alternate universes. And in those other universes, like, gravity is heavier, so the guy comes super strong. Or the Earth was flooded, so he has, you know, mermaid powers. So, um, we liked that idea for a power and never ended up using the X-Men. So, later on when we were pitching ideas to Cartoon Network, that was pitched. Um, and it ultimately became Ben 10. They liked the idea of somebody who could transform into all these different things, thought the parallel universes might be too heady for kids, and so then we ended up going with aliens, ultimately, after a long development time. How do you come up with the different aliens that you use on the show? Oh, gosh, that's from a lot of different sources. I mean, sometimes it's what powers would be cool, uh, what, would look good, what would look good in animation, what do you want to visually see, um, banging around with a kid. What would a kid think are cool powers? You know, that's really where we try to start. So, um, when you did uh, Alien Force and um, Ultimate, yeah, Ultimate um, Alien, yeah. Where did you come? Where did you decide to take the, the show in those directions? What happened was uh, that was a decision made by Cartoon Network, kind of very early on, because they felt that action shows and adventure shows only sort of exists for about four to five seasons. So they figured, well, we'll make the fifth season a whole new show and see what happens. But nobody knew that Ben 10 was going to become what it became. So there really were more stories to tell with the classic Ben. Um, but the decision had already been made to start to gravitate towards an older audience and have our guys you know, follow what the audience was doing. Um, Omniverse, which is the new show, is a little bit back to the roots of the original Ben 10. So what's Omniverse uh, basically? Uh, Omniverse, uh, I can't say too much about it, it comes out this fall. Uh, old Ben uh, and young Ben are both in it. And there's new aliens, new kind of adventure. Uh, they just had a preview a couple of weeks ago uh, that was really great. It's a lot of fun, it's a lot, very bouncy. It's kind of back to um, back to basics in a so lot of ways. Omniverse is a continuation, not a continuation of the series, or yeah, continuation, not a reboot. Okay, and when does that debut? Uh, sometime in the fall. Okay. Thank you very much. Sure, my good pleasure. Luck on the, good luck on the show. Thank you. Hi, uh, Mike DiCarlo. Uh, been in the business for a little over thirty years. I've worked for Marvel, DC. Uh, currently doing a lot of work for The Simpsons, Disney, Warner. Uh, I have a website, fancommissions.com, which appeals to private collectors. Uh, I draw anything that your heart desires of any style or genre or character. And, uh, and 
enjoying the uh, day here at the Marriott in Trumbull, and uh, I'm happy to do this interview. What's been your favorite comic to work on? Well, uh, superhero, I, I uh, <coughs> worked on the Fantastic Four a couple of times, which was my favorite comic as a kid. And uh, currently, I'm uh, doing uh, Peanuts, penciling and inking uh, Peanuts for for Boom, which is a subsidiary of Disney. And that's kind of a childhood fantasy of mine to have uh, worked on the, the Peanuts characters, so, uh... <laughs> Hi, I'm Rick Myers. I'm the author of uh, Films of Fury, the Kung Fu movie book, as well as for one week only, the world of exploitation films, and I'm also the screenwriter of Films of Fury, the Kung Fu movie movie. My next project is called Santa Confidential which is coming out this Christmas, and we talked to Santa Claus and asked him the 52 top questions that everybody wanted to know, and he answered honestly. And we asked him 52 questions, because that way you can read each question each week from Christmas to Christmas. So that's me, and here's all my stuff of all the stuff I've done over the years. We've got my books, my DVDs, my comic books, my novels, all sorts of stuff. I was also Kung Fu consultant on Kung Fu Panda, and they gave me that as a reward. So that's who I am, that's what I'm doing, and it's for the whole family what I do. So get my DVDs, buy my books, and enjoy yourself. Now what, what gets you uh, interested in all these, uh, these old martial arts uh, Kung Fu movies? Well, you know, I, w I worked in comic books. I started my career in comic books. And uh, I was always frustrated that uh, the television shows back in the 60s and 70s and the movies would always treat superheroes kind of like campy. They wouldn't te take them seriously. So I went to Larry Hama, the creator of uh, the G.I. Joe world that we now know, and complained about this at his offices at Marvel Comics. And he said, follow me. And he brought me downtown in New York and I saw Baby Cart in the Land of Demons, which was one of the Lone Wolf movies, a samurai film, and I was amazed and astonished. It was wonderful. He said, we're not done yet, and he brought me down to Chinatown, and I saw Drunken Monkey in a Tiger's Eye, which is Jackie Chan's drunken master back in 1978, before anybody in America knew who he was. And I went, this was a comic book come to life. This was not campy at all. This was great stuff. So I went to my publisher, because I'd already written a book on science fiction films and fantasy films, and said, I want to write a book on martial art movies. And they said, here's some money. Go do that. So I did. And that and after a while I began to realize that in order to understand these movies, I needed to understand Kung Fu itself. Because it was kind of like a Chinese guy seeing a baseball game or seeing a baseball movie and thinking that baseball was great and making a and writing a Chinese book about baseball movies, except not knowing the rules of baseball. So I didn't know the rules of Kung Fu, so I had to learn that, and by learning that, things got better and better and better. So that's what wound up by me doing my new Kung Fu film book and my new Kung Fu film movie, and the Kung Fu movie movie, because now I understand more about the rules, so I'm able to explain it better. One of the things on your table was Jackie Chan Spartan X. Yes. I mean, I've known Jackie since 1978 when I first discovered his uh, second big hit, uh, Dr Drunken Master. And so I've been trying to get him into America in a way he wanted to be gotten into America because for years they tried to just make him Bruce Lee or Clint Eastwood. So I would, I would visit Jackie in uh, Hong Kong and I was saying, we've got to get, you know, so I arranged to have him appear on a bunch of uh, television documentaries in England and America. And I inspired a bunch of filmmakers to do documentaries on him. And finally, I said, we got to do a comic book with you. So we did a comic book with him. Why didn't that finish? Oh, you'd have to ask Michael Golden about that. And also uh, Renee Witterstatter, one of the co-writers, as well as the publisher and the power behind it. I'm not sure. I know I finished the script. <laughs> I did all six issues of the finished script. So I'm not sure what happened. I guess it was just, um, you know, whatever happens in the comic industry. Can you tell us what happened? Any idea of what happened after those uh, few issues that came out? Uh? No, I was already on to other projects. No, I mean the story. Oh, the story? Yeah. Well, um, uh, it basically was my rewriting of the uh, Armor of God story, which is, in Armor of God, it said that if all the five pieces of the armor are lost, that the world will be destroyed. So I, made, I wanted to follow through with that and uh, try to keep the world from being destroyed. Hmm. And Jackie did that. 
Uh, do you have a website that people can go to? Sure, it's rickmyers.com, which is R-I-C. It's just my name, rickmyers.com. No K in Rick. Leave the K off for karma. Thank you very much. You bet. Hi, I'm Mike Lilly, comic book artist here at Comic Con in Connecticut. Uh, I'm an artist that's worked on Nightwing, Detective Comics, Vampirella, uh, Quasar for Marvel, and I'm also an illustrator that does work for Nike and Scholastic Books. Um, actually, my brother was an artist, but an amateur artist, and um, so I always saw him drawing at home, and I just kind of took after him. And then I put it aside, and then when I went to college, my roommate was into comics, so I, I saw what he was reading, and I got back into comics, and from there I just went to School of Visual Arts, and I studied with Carmen Infantino, and kind of got the ball rolling. Yeah. Uh, favorite? I love, like, more cosmic stuff, like outer space, uh, sci-fi fantasy, but my bread and butter has been, like, more of the adventure comics, like Nightwing or Batman. But I, I love the cosmic stuff. Oh, sure. Um, if you're a young artist, like when I was younger, I got How to Draw Comics the Marvel Way. It's a great book. Um, you got to study it. It's like a little classroom in a book. Get the one by Stanley and John Buscema. There's different versions, but get the How to Draw Comics the Marvel Way. And I love that. I studied it and kind of it opened your eyes about how to create a comic book. Oh, thank you. Hi, my name is Paul Kufferberg, and uh, I'm a writer for comic books and other things. Um, I am currently the writer of uh, Life with Archie Comics, or Archie Comics, in which we uh, see the adventures of a grown-up Archie in one reality where he's married to Betty, the other where he's married to Veronica. And I also write all kinds of uh, fiction and non-fiction, and uh, this is our latest endeavor, Red Deus, which is a, a, a book of short stories about what happens when the classical pantheons of gods return and uh, want to resume their dominion over the earth. Uh, gosh, I just always was a writer. I, I don't even remember getting interested, I just was. You know, I always wanted to tell stories and been doing it all my life. So I was, uh, started writing for, DC, for Charlton Comics in 1975 and uh, DC Comics a few months later and I've uh, been doing it ever since. Never had to have a real job, thank goodness. Yeah. What's your favorite uh, thing to write? Well, at the moment, I love the Archie comics. I've been having a ball writing it. I've been doing it for a little over two years now. And uh, it's some of the most fun I've ever had in writing comic books. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's a great challenge to take these iconic American teenage characters and, and write them as, uh, as uh, you know, 20-somethings uh, jumping into life and, and learning how to how to, you know, how to live. How do you make the Veronica and Betty universe separate? Well, it's just uh, the matter of, of what, how their lives would go if, you know, in, in the Veronica universe, uh, you know, Archie would go to work for her father initially and, and uh, you know, try to become a businessman. And in the Betty universe, um, he tries to make it as a musician and then goes on to, uh, uh, they return to Riverdale and become school teachers. Uh, after after Miss Grundy dies, uh, Archie and uh, Betty are hired to, to teach at Riverdale High. Um, I enjoy them both. I mean, you know, I like to alternate it. So I, I, it gives me a chance to kind of exercise different sets of muscles at a different time. So it's, uh, I love them both. I, I just like writing. I just like telling stories. Excuse me? Uh, just keep at it. Just keep working and write every day and write a lot. You know, the only way, uh, you know, the, the first million words or so are just practice. So, you know, you just got to keep working at it. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Thank you. Hi, I'm Bob Greenberger. I'm a former executive at DC Comics and Marvel Comics. Currently a freelance writer. Soon to be the author of Star Trek, The Complete Unauthorized History, which will be out in October. And as a writer, also recently helped create this universe, Ray Deus. Uh, book just came out this month in August, and I've got a story in that. 
and continue to do a blend of fiction, non-fiction, young adult writing, adult writing. <laughs> so, um, what you, what you find is you, how did you get started writing? Uh, I was inspired by actually Clark Kent's career as a journalist and uh, studied writing and journalism in college. Went to work right in uh, the magazine business at Starlog Press where I created a magazine about comic books which led me to a job at DC Comics. And uh, between two stints I was at DC for 20 years, a year at Marvel, uh, just over a year at the Weekly World News and the rest of it's been freelance writing. What is it easier to work on, fiction or non-fiction? They both have different demands. Obviously, the non-fiction requires a tremendous amount of research, while the fiction, you're often doing research, but you're also creating your characters. Um, you know, they, they both require different sets and skills. It's hard to say if one is tougher than the other. Do you have any advice for anybody who wants to become a writer? Writers write. Writers write, writers read, they listen to people, pick up on, on how the different people speak, they pay attention to the news and seek inspiration, uh, but for the most part they write every day, they develop that discipline so that they're not staring at a blank screen, um, and they read, they read everything. They don't read just their favorite authors, but they sample new authors, new genres, new subject matter, and uh, see where it takes their imagination. Okay. Um, you have a website where you can uh, follow your work? www.bobgreenberger.com Thank you very much. Sure, my pleasure. Okay. Hi, I'm Peter David. I'm best known for my 12-year run on The Incredible Hulk. When I'm home shoveling cat poop like a more immortal human, I use new sweet scoop. So, uh, what else have you worked on besides Incredible Hulk? Uh, X Factor, Stephen King's Dark Tower, Fallen Angel, um, Spider Man, Friendly Neighborhood Spider Man. Uh, I've pretty much, uh, for DC Comics, I wrote Young Justice, uh, Supergirl, Aquaman. At some point or another, I have pretty much written every single uh, big two character. And it's been a great time. And you've also done novels as well. Yes, yes I have. I've had over 70 novels published. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'm also part now of a publishing consortium called Crazy 8 Press, along with Bob Greenberger and several other very talented folks, in which we are actually putting out our own books. But during, you know, in the intervening time, I've written a host of Star Trek novels, movie novelizations, original fantasy series, such as the King Arthur books um, uh, that began with Nightlife, and also a series called Strapropo of Nothing. So I've been busy. Yeah. Wish you enjoy uh, more working on comics or working on novels. They both have their advantages. I mean, I'm not trying to be mealy mouthed about it, but when you're writing a novel. It's the purest form of storytelling short of setting up on a soapbox on a corner and and saying your stories out loud. Um, on the other hand, with a comic book or with any collaborative endeavor, if you have good collaborators that can wind up telling a more powerful story than you would have been able to do on your own. So what's your, what's your favorite character to write? Right now, uh, if we're talking about comic book characters, probably uh, Jamie Madrox and Layla Miller over in X Factor. They are just endlessly entertaining to me. What do you, what do you find entertaining about them? Sorry? What do you find entertaining about them? What do you find entertaining about them? Oh, um, I'm loud in here, folks. I, their personalities nicely integrate with each other because Jamie Madrox is one of the most indecisive individuals in the Marvel Universe. He always second guesses himself and tries to figure out which is the best path to trod, to tread. Um, whereas Layla Miller has is an endless font of information 
about things that are going to happen. So when you have one person who's uncertain and another person who seems always certain, that's naturally going to provide a really good mix. So where can people find out more about your work? Where can people find out more about your work? Uh, where can they find out more? Well, let's see. I'm on Twitter at Peter David underline pad, P-A-D. I'm on Facebook. I have a website, peterdavid.net. Um, so I'm pretty easily accessible. Also, uh, create, you can go to crazy8press.com to find out more about uh, Crazy 8. Thank you very much. You're welcome. How you doing? Um, I'm Matthew K. Manning, and uh, I'm a writer for DC and Marvel and a lot of various book publishers. Um, I've written a lot of the books here, uh, including my new book, The Batman Files, which is a comprehensive uh, journal from Bruce Wayne's point of view of Batman's entire, entire career. And I've done a lot of other uh, kind of history books, uh, some uh, different uh, kids' comics, and some other comics I don't have on the table right now, but... <laughs> How'd you get started writing? Uh, I, got, I got started writing, originally I was, I went to the School of Visual Arts uh, in Manhattan and I was a cartooning major, and then I started uh, interning at DC, and after that I started, they gave me my first job, uh, which is an issue of Justice League Adventures, and I kept, just kept writing after that, and that led into Batman Strikes, and then Legion of Superheroes, and I started doing a whole bunch of book jobs for Marvel, and I just kept going ever since, so... <laughs> What do you like most about um, being a writer? Uh, probably the fact that I don't have to actually work. I like uh, just uh, staying at home and just locking myself in the room and getting all the work done. And then when I'm done, I can walk out and play with my daughter and you know, <laughs> never have to commute, which is good. Do you have a favorite character or series? Uh, probably favorite character is Batman. I grew up with uh, Batman fan. The 1989 movie kind of changed my childhood. and. Uh, Made me a Batman fan, and, and The Outsiders, his team, which it was my first actual comic book. So. Do you have any uh, advice for anybody who wants to get into uh, writing? Uh, to writing itself, uh, it's not that much advice. Just uh, maybe you know, try to get. You might try to get a uh, break in elsewhere first. It seems to be the uh, the current trend is to get a job in some sort of other capacity, it's whether it be film or TV or something. It's just, it's very hard to break in straight through comics, which almost doesn't happen anymore, unfortunately. Do you have a website people can check more of your work for? Uh, yeah, it's uh, just uh, www.matthewkmanning.com. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Aletha Martinez. I'm currently working on New Crusaders Red Circle for Archie Comics. My target audience is young adult to adults. <laughs> so, um, what's New Crusaders? New Crusaders is Archie's relaunch of their old superhero title. They're publishing it online at first and then bringing it to comic books. So what's it about? Well, I actually didn't realize it had such a legacy, such a long history, but there are all these older superheroes that were around for a while, and they obviously defeated all the evil in their world, except one, the Brain Emperor comes back, and he just destroys all of those heroes that were comfortable. Now the shield is the only one left, and he's bringing up their children to combat the evil of the Brain Emperor and the rest of the villains that he's about to resurrect. And you're the artist on this? I am. I'm the regular artist on New Crusaders. And then you also have your own project. Uh, That's right. You, me, and ever. What's that one about? Well, I don't know if I should start off by saying recognizable heroes are killed off by Pandora Monster. And the government's been training a set of heroes. As you can see, she's in uniform. Who bring her? I'm sensing a trend. Huh? <laughs> I'm sensing a trend. You're sensing a trend. <laughs> well, it's not my fault. The other one was written by the other company. This one was my own baby. Well, they bring down Pandora's monster the first round, but they find out six years later there's a drop of her blood, and they better go and get it. <laughs> so, who's uh, the target audience for this series? This is also, a, you know, all ages book. <laughs> And where can we find out more about it? You can reach me at my website on DeviantArt or www.ariatstorm.com. Is it tough being, uh, you don't hear too much too about female uh, comic artists. 
No, I'm, I'm, I guess I'm like the 1%. <laughs> There's not very many of us. How'd you get into uh, doing comic book art? I was actually Joe Quesada's assistant at first. <laughs> then Iron Man was my first title. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Hi, I'm Jerry Ordway. I've worked on Superman, uh, Batman movie comic, Our Shazam, Fantastic Four, and some Avengers stuff. How did you get uh, started working in comics? I always read comics when I was a kid and I really enjoyed them. Um, I kind of got into comics just by working in a commercial art studio and I started doing coloring books and uh, licensing stuff. And I took those samples to DC Comics and they hired me based on that, which was good. What's your favorite character to work on? I enjoyed working on uh, Captain Marvel and Shazam. I think it was my favorite comic to do. Well, I, as a, as a uh, Captain Marvel fan myself, I ha kind of have to ask this question. The new 52 version of Shazam. Have you heard anything about it? Do you have an opinion on it? Or? I think it's different. It's, I haven't seen enough of it to really judge it. Um, I like the I kind of like the classic Captain Marvel. Although people were mad at the changes I made when I did the book, but I tried to stay a little closer to the concept. I didn't totally reinvent it, but all the 52 projects are reinventions, so it's kind of hard to judge it. I think if I see more, so far I've only seen a couple chapters. Um, so are you doing anything right now? Or? I just finished eight pages for World's Finest number five. It's like a Power Girl and Huntress. And uh, I did the cover for that. And I'm working on the Human Bomb, which is connected to the Freedom Fighters, written by Jimmy Palmiotti and Justin Gray. Do you have a website where anybody can check up on your work or anything like that? Um, if they want to come look for sketches and all kinds of stuff I post, it's on Ordster's Random Thoughts on uh, Google Blog. So I guess it's Ordster's Random Thoughts at blogspot.com, maybe. I don't know. I'm also on Facebook. I have a fan page, The Ordster. And I'm on Twitter as Jerry Ordway. So if you on Twitter, you can look me up. Well, I know a lot of people that I know really enjoy uh, Power Shazam. I've only seen a few uh, issues myself, and I have enjoyed those as well. So. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.